This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin spam and mining pool centralization and try to talk a bit more about how they are interrelated. This is following up on a comment from TTKDDRY. Running a spam filtering node has no effect on spam getting included in blocks. If the evil pools, the mining pools, keep running their own non-filtering nodes, any spammer can connect to them directly. So I want to talk about this, but first I want to talk about how the Bitcoin network works. After you sign and broadcast a Bitcoin transaction using your node or using someone else's node, your transaction is then shared from node to node across the Bitcoin network. That's what the network is. It's an interconnected series of nodes. When this transaction is shared from node to node across the Bitcoin network, this is what's called Bitcoin's gossip model. And it looks like this. And a Bitcoin transaction takes only a few seconds to propagate globally. So this is where the transaction begins. This is a model or a snapshot from 2023. So I imagine the propagation is even faster now. But what we're going to see, we're going to see 5,000, I believe, microseconds, which is a five second propagation time. So we can see it's spreading quite quickly to every single continent on Earth. Okay, so that's what that looks like. We can let it play out. Here's a small wrinkle to be aware of. Even if your Bitcoin transaction follows Bitcoin consensus rules, if your Bitcoin transaction is non-standard, for example, it has more than 80 bytes of data in the op return, it will likely not get passed beyond the first node that you share it with. That means that it's very unlikely to get picked up by, by a Bitcoin miner. So repeat after me, things that are not forwarded by nodes are less likely to get into blocks. So mempool, mempool policy and spam filters do work. And notice that I said less likely, not that filters make it impossible for a non-standard transaction to get picked up by a miner, but that they make it less likely. I think Matt Hale breaks this down really well, and we should really support companies that are on the right side of the spam issue. This is Matt Hale of Start9. Labs. I'm not sure I've heard Umbral come out and say something like this. So if you're trying to choose between Start9 and Umbral, you should definitely go with Start9. But let's hear what Matt Hill has to say about the problem uh, or the solution of filters. They can't stop every possible attack, but they deter most and raise the cost of success. We should be adding filters, not removing them. And all filters should be configurable. Power to the nodes. So let me break that down real quick. There's a little bit of nuance there behind the obvious kind of impact statement that it was designed to be, okay? Which is that filters do work. Meaning, for example, go to any wallet, okay, or raw Bitcoin core node and construct a transaction that has an op return output greater than 83 bytes, right? Put 100 bytes of data in there and broadcast it to the network. As you would any transaction, just send it to the network and tell me what happens. It's going to die immediately. It will not flood. It will not be stored in any mempools. That transaction will not make it further than the first node that you told it to. You hand the transaction to the, one of your peers or all of your peers, and they're all just going to drop it, every one of them. It will not get mined. It will not get into a block. The filters work. That's what it means to work, okay? It means the intruder, I don't even want to be that malicious. The person you didn't invite or don't want to come over, the guy you don't like, tried to come in your front door and it was locked. Okay? It worked. I think that's a really good summary. Jimmy Song looked into the filters, the op return filters, and he used the fact that a lot of people have been trolling ghost of unhosted Marcellus by sending him op return transactions greater than 80 or 83 bytes. There are 30 such transactions in a four month period. Eight had reasonable fees, less than 2x the median. 11 had around double fees. Seven had around triple fees. Four had 5x to 8x fees. Nine of these transactions were mined, or that is included in a block by F2 pool, and 21 were mined by Mara. Mara loves mining spam. So in general, the opportune filter means the non-standard transactions get their non-standard because they were greater than 83 bytes. The non-standard transactions, they're within consensus, but they're non-standard. We're on average paying a good deal more than normal transactions to get into a block. And since only about 18% of the hashing power seems to mine them, they had to wait five or six times longer to confirm. If the point of filters, Jimmy says, if the point of filters is to make spamming cumbersome and costly, I'd say that they're doing their job 
and he includes the, ta the transaction ideas IDs in the in the tweet if you want to follow up on it. If you're finding this video helpful so far, just pause here very briefly to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So let's move on to the next step here. What's the solution if your Bitcoin transaction is non-standard and is thus not being shared from node to node under the gossip model? But let's say you still want to get it included in a block. Solution number one, you put the transaction in a block template and you try to mine the block yourself. This is not at all cheap or easy since you currently will probably need to spend about $320,000 on average. I'm just taking 3.125 Bitcoin times whatever the rough price, current price of Bitcoin is right now, around $100,000. So it's not cheap or easy. You have to spend about $320,000 on average to mine a block. And even then there are no guarantees. You might not find a block for months or years because this is all probabilistic. So that's solution number one, to get a non-standard transaction in a block. Solution number two, you ask your friend who runs a mining pool to include it in a block as a favor. Of course, most people don't have friends who run mining pools. Solution number three, you go directly to a Bitcoin mining pool and pay them to include your transaction in one of the next blocks that they mine. This is what's called an out-of-bound payment or OOB payment. Mara, for example, offers a service like this called Slipstream. And a reminder that Mara is the same company that likes, likes to mine other networks and thereby undermine or seek to undermine the Bitcoin network and in, in an ironic way, put their own machines out of business. Mara is the same company that likes to mine cryptocurrencies like Casp on the side. And Mara is the same company that also used to enforce US government censorship by producing only OFAC compliant blocks until the Bitcoin plebs called them out on it. So when thinking about slipstream and non-standard submission, uh, submit non-standard transaction submissions, I always like to think of Mara as being somewhat like that person who stands on a street corner at night and will do anything for a quick buck. And the word I'm thinking of, of course, rhymes with core. Here's the press release from Mara when they launched slipstream in February of 2023. Uh, Marathon Digital Holdings, a leader in supporting and securing the Bitcoin ecosystem and also the Caspi ecosystem, has launched Slipstream, a direct Bitcoin transaction submission service designed to streamline confirmations of large or non-standard, there's that word, non-standard Bitcoin transactions, because filters do work. They go on to say, by default, Bitcoin nodes frequently exclude large and non-standard transactions from Bitcoin's mempool, from each of their individual mempools. So it, seem, it would seem that Mara understands that filters work. Bitcoin nodes frequently exclude large and non-standard transactions from Bitcoin's mempool, even if these transactions adhere to the Bitcoin network's consensus rules. And of course, this is how it works. You don't have to mine something. You don't have to relay something, even though it follows consensus rules, if you don't like it because it's spam. As a result, complex Bitcoin transactions are often delayed or unprocessed to encourage experimentation and development on Bitcoin and to make us more money. What we're going to do is we're going to put garbage in the chain like this for a fee where someone paid almost $3,000 to have this frog put in the block. And it took up almost the whole block, 3.91 megabytes and the, the maximum size is, is uh, four megabytes. So this is the kind of garbage you can put in to a block using Slipstream. I don't really want to advertise their service. If we take a look at how much it costs, if currently the transaction fees to get in the next block are four sats per vbyte while I'm recording this, if we go to Mara and we refresh this, we can see that Mara's a slipstream transaction fee, it's roughly, I, I've been doing this a lot, it's roughly three times what it is. So it's uh, if it's four, four regular transactions submitted through nodes, it's going to be uh, three times that, which is 12 sats per vbyte. So this is a much more expensive thing, not non-standard transactions. If they're not going to get relayed by the nodes, you have to end up paying three times the amount. So this is how filters work to force you to use a direct submission service like this and to pay a lot more money, which itself is a deterrent. And you can see here, it says for custom blocks, please contact them. And that's how you can put big, uh, that's how you can put garbage like this in a block. Mara will help you do that. So they're really willing to do anything for a quick block, a quick buck. Uh, Forstan says here, if your primary goal was minor, centralization, you'd filter transactions in the mempool so that only Mari gets the spam directly, makes more money and buys more ASICs than small miners who would never get those large high transaction, those large high fee transactions before they are in 
blocks. So he's saying if your primary goal was minor centralization, I would say hello. Wasn't it wasn't Bitcoin spam filters that caused the mining pool centralization problem? It's actually the reverse. It's the mining pool centralization problem that makes spam such a big problem. If there were no large mining pools like Mara, no one would ever go direct to a mining pool and pay for a service like Slipstream, since it would not be very effective. Since Mara wouldn't be finding that many blocks in a world of many small mining pools, it's impossible for the same mining pool, or very unlikely for the same mining pool, to find so many blocks like Mara, Foundry, and Pool, and their pool pools do these days. In a world of many small mining pools, out-of-bound payments are not a problem. The only reason you use Slipstream is because Mara has a good chunk of the hash rate pi, and you have a reasonable chance of getting your junk in the blockchain using them. This is what mining pool centralization looks like. Here's Mara Pool right here with about 6% of the total hash. We have Foundry, which is a large KYC, U.S. mining pool. And then we have all these pools, which are basically part of a pool of pools run by Bitmain and pool via BTC, F2 pool, I believe Luxor. There are a bunch of them that are Chinese mining pools. So this is a centralization that is a huge problem. This is the huge problem that Ocean Mining and the guys over there are trying to fix, allowing individual miners, in other words, individual, individual hashers who have those mining rigs, those ASICs, allowing individual miners to get to decide which transactions to put in a block rather than just being hashing mercenaries. And that's trying to bring back what Bitcoin looked like in Satoshi's original plan in the white paper, where every single Bitcoiner runs a Bitcoin node and a lottery miner at the same time, while still benefiting, in the case of Ocean, from the variance reduction that you get with pool mining. This is something that Satoshi clearly did not foresee, the problem with pool mining and how the incentives work to make more and more people mine using pools. So this is what's going on right now. Right now, Luke Dasher and Mechanic and many others at Ocean and elsewhere are spending 12 hours a day trying to fight mining pool centralization, and then the other 12 hours a day fighting the interrelated problem of Bitcoin spam. Meanwhile, everyone, including Core, is telling them that filters are a waste of time because number one, filters don't work. That's just gaslighting since they do work, as we've demonstrated in this video. Number two, if filters do work too well, which is sort of a contradiction here, but if filters do work too well, then mining pools are just going to get spammed directly from the spammers and stick it in a block through direct submission. And if enough transactions take this out of the this out of the band path, it's going to hurt mempool fee estimation, which of course was always highly inaccurate anyway, because you don't really want to know when the next block is going to be found. But I would say, isn't this putting the cart before the horse? Who cares if mempool fee estimation improves if the cost of that is acquiescing to the spammers and agreeing to relay spam around the network? And to make matters worse, Bitcoin Core would have us just blow open the opportun limits. That's clearly their goal here. They've already increased them over a thousand times. Core would have us remove the core would remove configurability for Bitcoin Core node users when it comes to OpReturn. That's what their plan is. And also they would force nodes, basically by doing this, to serve up spam directly to the mining pools. That's what they mean when they worry about quote unquote uniform mempools. Core seems to want all node operators to make their mempools correspond more closely to the mempools of mining pools that mine spam. Isn't this completely backwards? Bitcoin Core should be working for the nodes and giving us more tools to fight spam rather than trying to take away the filters that we already do have. Instead, Core seems to be more interested in helping the crypto VC spammers and the mining pool spammers. And I'd say, isn't it strange how every single change that Core makes is always in the direction of making things easier for these bad actors? If not, why did they reject Luke Dasher's pull request that filtered out inscription spam? At the time, they called it quote unquote too controversial, but they seem to have had no problem ramming through the latest op return pull request, which is clearly highly controversial. Here's the question I keep asking, and it's a, it's a genuine question. Has Bitcoin Core been compromised? Are they being paid by crypto VCs or maybe mining pools in some under the table way that we don't know about? If not, how else do you explain such strange behavior and why does everything always trend in the direction of more spam? Why doesn't the brain trust at Bitcoin Core put some more cycles into coming up with better spam filters since they're so concerned about UTXO bloat? More spam filters seems to be what the actual users of their software, namely nodes, want. It's just the crypto VCs and mining pool spammers who don't want this. 
Or does no one at CORE believe that Bitcoin is a monetary network, but rather that it's a platform for arbitrary data, in which case this isn't really spam because you can put anything you want on the Bitcoin network? If that's the case, I'd also rather not have them working on my software either because they share very different goals from me. I believe that Bitcoin is a monetary network and this is how it is used best and we need to drive the spammers away from Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.